everybody, this is Carl Stern here from LinuxSchool.com. Thank you very much for joining me. Hey, I've got some great content coming up for you uh, over the coming uh, few weeks this summer on our free podcast feed uh, dealing with Batman. Now, this is in addition to our other content. You'll still get uh, periodic free shows from LinuxSchool.com, although the bulk of our stuff is over on our Patreon feed. That's where all of our great retro reviews, podcast reviews, our great Dragon King Carl pro wrestling stuff, all that's still on our Patreon feed. And you'll still get a steady supply of great new podcasts here on our free feed. But this summer, I'm going to be giving you a lot of stuff uh, that's previously been up on our Patreon feed dealing with Batman. The reason we're focusing on Batman is because we've been doing the Batman in Order podcast series, and we're up now almost to episode number 10, 10 chronological appearances of Batman, the first 10 appearances. So if you've ever wondered what the early days of Batman uh, were like, how he changed over the years, and he most definitely changed over the years, you can get those shows, all of them, on our Patreon feed. I hope you'll uh, check us out at When It Was Cool. There, it's very easy to find if you become a Patreon supporter. I have our different shows in a collection, the Batman in Order collection. Uh, you can click right on that. Plus, I hope you'll sample some of our other stuff, too. We have over 2,300 podcasts right now on our Patreon feed. That's right, over 2,300 podcasts just waiting for you to listen to. I've been looking for some new stuff to sample to try out dealing with pop culture and retro pop culture. We've got your fix. Hey, try us out for a month. Just see if you like it. I bet you will. We've got a very active Patreon. Uh, we post multiple shows per week. So now I present to you this, a look at Season 1, Episode 1 of the 1966 TV series, Batman. Look out for much more great retro Batman content coming up here at com. Jiminy Crickets, have I got a great show to review for you today. And uh, everybody knows this show. It is a classic. It is a legendary show. It is superhero, but it is just all-time classic show. Yes, Batman, the 1966 TV series. Yes, believe it or not, I've never gotten around to reviewing this, even though this was one of my favorite shows as a kid. No, I wasn't alive in 1966. I was born sometime later, but obviously this thing was on reruns all throughout my my childhood, my life, pretty much. I've seen virtually every single one of them. I doubt there's there's an episode of, of Batman that I haven't seen Um and I got to tell you, as a, as a six, seven, eight year old kid, this was fun. It was energetic. It was colorful. It was Batman. It was Super Friends come to life. This was everything uh, you know. Six, seven, eight year old kid wanted out of life and out of the world. You know, as a teenager or as a older, you know, young adult, perhaps a comic book collector, I could see maybe. They wouldn't be such big fans of this show because that's that isn't that always the era where you're in? No, that's not my Batman. That's too ah, made my Batman stupid. That that by the way is my grumpy young man voice. Ah, can't stand it. They, they made, made Batman laughing stock. Too stupid. Well, look, as an old grumpy man like I am now, this series is freaking hilarious. So I haven't watched Batman, the, the 1966 TV series, in a while. It's been a long time since I sat down and watched it. Not so long ago, and this is just how sometimes things don't quite sink out in life, I was going through the Walmart and looked, and lo and behold, there was the entire Batman series, the entire series on Blu-ray disc. Problem is, we didn't have a Blu-ray player. A Blu-ray player had long since bit the dirt. We hadn't had one, but thanks to a wonderful, kind let's see here. What are the things I heap upon this person because they know who they are. Um, generous for sure. 
dark and disturbed, it definitely. But nevertheless, uh, we got a new Blu-ray player thanks to uh, one of our listeners, and thank you. So I could have got this and I could have watched this, but now I'm going to have to go back and get it because I have not seen Batman in forever. Um. And so the other day, I think I got, I think I seen this on social media somewhere. I saw somebody mention that, hey, uh, part of the Batman 1966 TV series is on the Roku app. Now, I have Rokus on both my TVs. That is my preferred streaming device. Uh, I've had Apple TV. It's the Apple TV is doesn't work well with the slow internet we have. Um, it is too complex. Uh, we have iPhones, iPads, stuff like that. Well, our iPads are pretty much out of date, but uh, we have iPhones. We're, we're no strangers to Apple iOS around our family here, and so you can mirror your phone off the TV and do stuff, do cool stuff like that, but it, se- it seemed like it was an internet hog, like it didn't stream nearly as well as the Roku, which seemed to, to do pretty well even with our terrible, horrible, no good century link internet. Um, so I prefer Roku. And when I found out that Batman, at least some of the shows, I think there's three seasons worth, that were on Roku, I today I had a little time, and I thought, I'm going to see if that's true. Flip over there, and then lo and behold, there it is in all of its technicolor glory, Batman the TV series. So now this this series, like many of our others, there will be numerous ver- episodes of this that we'll want to review over time. But... I decided to start with season one, episode one. Yes, the the kickoff, just to see, because I don't rem- I didn't remember. I mean, all these ran together. I don't remember which one was season, which one was the debut episode of the Batman series, and uh, it's very memorable. It has it debuts uh, the Riddler, Frank Gorshin, as, as that character. It has the famous bat dance from the disco that's in that episode. Also, I was like. I don't ever remember Batman, the 966 series, doing a stupid um, origin episode. Like, this is how Batman become Batman. Like, you know, like every movie has to do nowadays. And we've seen, you know, how many origins of Spider-Man, Batman, everybody. Like, we know these pop culture characters. We know them. You've heard this speech before from me. We know who they are. You don't have to tell me for the millionth time who Superman is and where he come from. Just... Throw me a movie out there and get to it, you know. I don't have to have his origin every freaking time there's a movie. It goes for every other comic book character out there that's that's a main pop culture star. Now, do I have a problem with it being Aquaman? No, that's fine. Aquaman's about your level, about your, no pun intended, about your watermark for who we need an, who we need an origin story for. Shazam, I'm fine with that. No problem. Let's have an origin episode for him because a lot of people here in 2019 maybe don't know this character that's been around since World War II. Um, And he's been out of the spotlight for many years. He's not nearly as popular as he was back in the 40s and even the 70s. So a large group of people may need a refresher. I'm fine with that. But for the love of everything sacred, everybody knows Batman's story Spider-Man's story, Superman's story. Um, who else we got out there that, that probably everybody should know? Uh, I don't even have a problem with giving Wonder Woman's story. That's fine if you want to give that. But there's a there's a few. Certainly Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, because we've seen them a gazillion times. All right. So thankfully they did not do that in 1966. It just started right in the middle of Batman's life, gave no backstory. He just works for the police department. Um, Commissioner Gordon just has a telephone hooked up to his house. His Bruce Wayne's butler answers the phone. Nobody finds this at all suspicious. Um, you know, there, there's there's Bruce Wayne does mention a couple times in this episode that his parents were murdered. That's it. It's like two throwaways, two throwaway lines in the monks in a, in a, in a monks him explaining what uh, you know what the story's going on. So it wasn't heavy handed at all. It wasn't um, at all out of context. And this is a comedy. This is a comedy action adventure show. It is color everywhere. It is um, over the top dialogue and it is absolutely hilarious. I 
laughed out loud several times during this episode. It's been so long since I've seen it. It's so much fun. I have lived the last you know, 10 or 12 years with sad sack Batman, all sad and gloomy, all Martha, you know, got to hate that. Hate it. This was fun. This was action adventure. Now, mind you, a lot of people hate when they camp up your superheroes. People hate it. I hate it sometimes. I, I want to say, I, I like to see serious superhero movies too. And I don't want to see sad, grim, sad, sack, non-smiling Superman. Um, but, it's fine to have some fun, too. Shazam was fun. Gosh, that was a fun movie. Go see that movie. Support fun movies. That was perfectly fine, fun superhero movie. This was a exceptionally fun Batman TV show. Now, these were all two-parters. They all ended with a cliffhanger. Tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, to find out you know how Robin gets his head out of this vice that the, Gr- the Riddler's got him in. Batman was drugged in this episode with a drink. He acted like he was drunk trying to drive at one point. It was utterly hilarious, just the absurdity of it. The police won't let him drive, make them, make him give them the keys to the car. It's great. Uh, this is just so much fun. So I'm not going to give you an origin story on Batman, the 1966 TV series either, because you know what it is, right? I mean, duh, who don't know what this show is? Uh, Adam West as Batman, Bruce Ward or Burt Ward as uh, Robin. It's all you need to know. And uh, so, I will say that the the Riddler. I've never been that big a fan of Frank Gorshin as the Riddler. Okay, of all, I, I like the Riddler as a. As a Super Friends character, I liked him in the comic books when I was a kid. His gimmick don't hold up too well when you get older. Like, remember when, uh, who's the comedian actor that did him uh, back in the 90s? Um, the the wacky face guy. Gosh, I'm not going to think of his name. Anyway, that dude. Um, Jim Carrey. I don't know why I couldn't say it. Jim Carrey, No. Uh, but the character itself is so ridiculous. He's a dude that wears a green outfit. And, and by the way, Gorshin wore the classic outfit. He looks like a burglar. He's wearing a pro wrestling tots and, and a full body suit with a burglar mask. It's all green with question marks on it. It's just the epitome of absurdity. I don't know how you do that character straight without... And we've seen, we've seen latter year, you know, dark, gloomy, goth, Riddler too, and it don't work at all. This is really the only way Riddler can work. It's just over the top, silly, stupid. But I wasn't that big a fan of Gorshin um, throughout this series. I always thought, as stupid as it was, uh, Burgess Meredith as the Penguin was fast was just fantastic. But definitely, Cesar Romero as the Joker was was great. But there's so many others that don't really get their their just desserts in this in, in this series. There's um, besides the Joker, the Penguin, the Riddler, and Catwoman, who were your three big ones, you also had King Tut, Mr. Freeze, the Bad Hatter, Egghead, um, uh, Louis the Lilac, remember him, the Bookworm. You had all these great, very wild, weird, out there villains for Batman to face off against. So, uh, but but he was good in this episode. I have to admit that that Frank Gorshin kind of won me over on this. There wasn't too much of him. What he did was kind of funny. the The best part of Batman sixty six, though, really and truly, is the police department. Uh, Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hare they are just the they are just baffled by everything. They 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 can't figure anything out. They play these comedic characters, super serious. And that's what's so wonderful. Like, there's no camp con They ain't smiling and cutting up and hijinks and whatever. They're very much the straight men. And they play these so clueless, so inept straight men that it is wonderful. It is just so, so great. Uh, Batman having the, the, the running gag of him always having the most absurd weapon or gadget 
that he needs for the situation never gets old. You know, of course, there's the famous from the movie, and yes, we got to review the movie, the Batman movie. I've got it here. Matter of fact, I, if I was thinking straight, I should have watched it too. I forgot I even had it. Uh, the famous shark repellent spray. But they've always got to. This is the one where they climb up the side of a museum where the Riddler's inside purporting to uh, pull, a, pull a crime, pull a caper. So they climb up the side of the wall, get to the top, and the, the window has bars over it. You know, it's a museum. They're keeping burglars out. So Batman pulls out of his utility belt a some sort of spray that's like a welding torch, so he cuts the bars off. Robin's about to drop the bars down, and Batman's like, no, Robin, remember, pedestrian safety. I mean, that's just the, that's just, Robin's like, oh, oh, yeah, you're, oh, yeah, sure, Batman. You know, it's just got this great Pollyanna kind of golly gee willikers deal to it, and Robin's like, uh, oh, oh, you know, okay. So Batman pulls out of his utility belt, and again, he's always got the right gadget, pulls out a bat hook, and he just reaches over, you know, suction cups it to the wall, hands him the bar section, he hangs it <laughs> over to the side. It's just the most ludicrous yet charming uh, thing about this whole show. I mean, it's just, you know, in the amongst of all this do-gooding and saving, now we've got to be good citizens too. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Gosh, our world could use a little more of that. Where it doesn't have to be stupid, it can just be... Fun. I mean, it was just a like, yeah, you know, stop what you're doing a minute and just think about what you can do to be a good citizen. So that was just wonderful. And uh, so basically, the uh, the Riddler suckers them into a lawsuit. What happens um, <laughs> goes over there and uh, is basically just set up this ridiculous armed robbery that wasn't an armed robbery, just made Batman think so. So he, the Riddler could serve him with a lawsuit. Now, they go through the rest of the episode of Batman doing law research and stuff, trying to figure out, says, well, you know, they got a guy, this newscaster on TV telling about it going, things look grim. Experts say that Batman has no chance of winning this lawsuit. And Batman, you know, Bruce Wayne sitting there going through my father's old law books and just look, things look pretty grim, old chum. Even though you can see this is a complete and utter setup, it's a com absolute, you know, um, he had every right to detain the Riddler who looked like he was arm robbing a dude. Um, but still, it was, you know, think, we better think first, you know, before we take a leap. And so it was so great. They end up going to this discotheque, this go go club. That's what they called it, the, the, the go go club. Wouldn't let Robin inside because he was underage. I thought that was great. Uh, Batman goes in, and that's where he he, you know, he tells the guy, or, or the girl, or the, the waitress comes by and says, can I check your cape, sir? He's like, no, I'm just going to go over and stand by the bar, try not to draw attention to myself. And he's standing there in this garish, you know, Batman outfit with purple and gray and the, the cowl and all that everywhere. It's just just so amazing. It goes over there. Of course, there is a uh, one of the Riddler's um, gang members sitting there, a female, and she's like, "So, you know, so sweetheart, what you want to do? You know, would you like to dance with me?" She's, uh, you know, kind of leading him on. And Batman obviously orders an orange juice at the bar. And I'm thinking the whole time, going, "I, I wouldn't drink that, Batman." And of course, it's drugged. But he goes out there first on the bat on the the bat floor, the, the dance floor, and does the bat dance where he does little figures over his eyes. It's just the most ridiculous. I mean, this is absolutely some drug, whacked out, psychedelic stuff going on here. It's it's crazy. Uh, Robin's outside minding the Batmobile. The, the Riddler drugs him, too, and they drag him down through a manhole to their secret lair. Batman finally comes to makes it outside, tries to drive, but he's still all drugged up. The police won't let him <laughs> make him give them the car keys. He's in no condition to drive. And uh, we find out that Robin's been put in one of these ridiculous trap devices. Uh, they've, they've got a, a big, like, wing, uh, not a winch, but like a vice thing going to squeeze in toward his head slowly, and then your narrator comes on. It's like, there looks like there's no escape for the boy wonder. You know, when will Batman, can Batman save his, you know, young ward from certain doom? Find out tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. And uh, then you go to the, the very 
very 1960s theme music. Just a wonderful show. Just so much fun. Just uh, just an absolute riot. Had a blast watching this. I'm for sure watching a few more of these. The uh, the wiki page says about season one, Lorenzo Simple Jr. had signed on as head scriptwriter. He wrote the pilot script and generally wrote in a pop art adventure style. Well, that's I'd say that's an accurate description of this pop art adventure. Stanley, Stanley Ralph Ross, Stanford Sherman, and Charles Hoffman were script writers who generally leaned more toward camp comedy and, in Ross's case, sometimes outright slapstick and satire. It was originally intended as a one hour show, but ABC changed the premiere date from fall 1966 to January of that year, with the network having only two early evening half-hour time slots available. The show was split into two parts, to air twice a week in 30-minute installments. A cliffhanger connected the two episodes, echoing the old movie serials. Some ABC affiliates weren't happy that ABC included a fourth commercial minute in every episode of Batman. One affiliate refused to air the series. The network insisted it needed the extra advertising revenue. The Joker, the Penguin, the Riddler, Catwoman, Mr. Freeze, and the Mad Hatter, villains who originated in the comic books, all appeared in the series, the plots for which were deliberately villain-driven. According to producers, Frank Gorshin was selected to portray the Riddler due to the fact that he was a Batman fan since childhood. Catwoman was portrayed by three different actresses during the series' run by Julie Newmar in the first two seasons, by Lee Merriweather in the future in the feature film based on the series, and by Eartha Kitt in the third and final season. Uh, so there we go. I thought this thing had more than three seasons. I guess it all three must be on the Roku app then. That's that's bizarre. Um, I thought for sure this thing run like five seasons or so. But there were a lot of episodes. Okay, season one had 34 episodes. Season two had 60 episodes, and season three had 26 episodes. Uh, so I guess there were actually a lot of episodes of the series. Just just wonderful. My gosh, if you've got a Roku, got the Roku app, or and again, the, the, full, the full Batman all seasons on DVD were not that expensive. Um, the movie, by the way, the, the, if you wonder where it fits into all this, the 1966 film, and we I guess that'll probably be the next thing I review since I just now remembered I got it. A film based on the television show Batman was released in 1966. The film was originally intended to be produced before the series as a way to introduce the series to the public. However, the series premiere was moved up and the film was forced to wait until the summer hiatus after the first season. The film was produced quickly to get into theaters prior to the start of season two of the television series, so it falls between... Uh, season one and season two. The film did not initially perform well at the cinema. Originally, the movie had been conceived to help sell the television series abroad, but the success of the series in America was sufficient publicity. The film was shot after season one was filmed. The movie's budget allowed for producers to build the Bat Boat and lease a helicopter that would be made into the Bat Copter, both of which were used in the second and third seasons of the television show. So there you go. That's that's that. All right. So what a wonderful what a wonderful show. There is a, a, a comic book tie-in, obviously. In 2013, DC Comics began publication of Batman 66. It was set, tell all new stories set in the world of the 1966 through 68 TV series, and I think it had some crossovers and things like that. I don't have this series. I wonder if we can get it in uh, in collected edition. I wonder, I'm going to have to look that up because I'd love to have this if they've got a like an omnibus edition or something of that so far. Because, yeah, there's there's a crossover. Batman 66 meets Wonder Woman 77. Um, so Batman 66 meets The Man from Uncle. Uh, Batman 66 meets Steed and Mrs. Peel from the Avengers TV series. So that's pretty awesome. Yes, the Green Hornet and Kato will cross over in an episode, I think, in season three of this. We'll definitely talk about that one. Um, Bruce Lee, my gosh. When it was cool.com needs much more Bruce Lee. I was just noticing the other day 
God, I haven't really done anything Bruce Lee related on the website. That's got to change. So look for that coming up. So in the meantime, what a wonderful series. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your opinions, your memories on Batman. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you one of the haters of Batman 66? Shame on you. Now, if, if you are, I'd love to love to hear your thoughts about it. Let's have a little fun with it. And uh, from time to time, we will uh, review some other episode of this for sure. All right. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for supporting us here at whenitwascool.com. And I'll see you again soon with another show.